All right, I'm gonna talk about training a little bit. I haven't spoken about physical training in a while. So I'm gonna go over two concepts that I'm pretty well known for and two concepts that I apply to my own training. And that is the five pillars and also high frequency training. So let's start with the five pillars. I like to do full body sessions every time I train. So if I train four times a week, it's four full body training sessions. That falls into the high frequency category. Now, what five categories do I cover at each training session? I always cover an upper body press. So an example of that could be double kettlebell military press, could be a barbell floor press, it could be weighted dips, could be incline presses, some kind of upper body pressing motion. Upper body pull, that could be ring pull-ups, it could be bent over rows, it could be lap pull down, it could be one arm dumbbell rows, it could be kettlebell renegade rows. So some kind of rowing motion and then just a different one each time. And then lower body press. So an example of that would be a squat or a leg press or a Hindu squat or a lunge, box step ups. These are all things that are lower body pressing motions. The way I deadlift falls into pressing and pulling because I use a really pronounced leg drive to get the bar moving. So the way I deadlift, I actually look at it more as a lower body pressing exercise than a lower body pulling exercise, although there's a huge pulling component. And then lower body pulling, now this would be a Romanian deadlift, glute ham raise, kettlebell swings, explosive lunges, keeping a low position. These work your hamstrings a great deal. And then finally, something for the torso or core work. So that could be dragon flags, it could be a kettlebell windmill, it could be hanging leg raises, it could be ab wheel rollouts. These are all excellent moves for a strong midsection. So those are the five categories. Now you could do more if you want, or you could even do a little bit less if you need to. You could cut out the core category altogether because you get so much of that indirectly with everything else you do. For example, when I do deadlifts and I wear a belt, I'm really pushing, bracing, pushing my stomach into the belt. And honestly, my midsection gets more sore from that than any direct abdominal exercise I do, even dragon flags, which are super intense. Now, breaking down sets and reps, that's where we have to be very precise because if you're following a high frequency protocol, let's get into high frequency now. Let's say you're training five times a week, Monday through Friday, five full body workouts. You have to stay very far from failure. You should have three reps at least left in the bank, meaning that let's say I'm deadlifting 500 pounds, and I do sets of three, on each of those sets, I could have done six if I pushed myself. So it's heavy enough that I'm building strength, I'm improving central nervous system facilitation, I'm getting better at the actual skill of training, and then it's not intense enough that I'm gonna burn out. Because if you go all out at every training session, you're only demonstrating strength, you're not building strength. So at best, you're gonna maintain whatever your strength is, at worst, you're gonna start getting diminishing returns. You're gonna be training harder and getting less out of it and maybe even regressing. So training per percentages and intensities have to be really precise. And a simple rule is just leave a few reps in the bank. Always go a little bit lower than you think you should, especially for men. Most men always overestimate what their max is. Well, uh, I think I can deadlift 500 pounds and you can barely deadlift 400 three times. Like, no motherfucker, you can't. So stop using that. Stop using some fictional PR as your base weight to work percentages off of and then complain that you're getting nowhere with training. Focus on optimal technique. Take three minute breaks in between sets. Now this is for the purpose of getting stronger. If you want to improve metabolic conditioning, that's another category. But when it comes to weight training, I train for strength. If I want to improve metabolic conditioning, I go sprinting or I do high rep kettlebell swings or I do interval training on an elliptical machine. That's a separate category than strength training. So what I do is I generally keep the rep range between about three and six because again, my focus is strength. Once you get above five reps, you're starting to get more into a hypertrophy protocol, especially if you're doing a certain amount of volume. And I do about three sets per exercise, sometimes more, sometimes less, but always about three. And then you can do these in alternating fashion as well. So for example, if I do incline presses, I could do glute ham raises in between each set. That way you get more done in less time. You're not just standing around, especially you're taking several minute breaks. And the key with that is just to make sure you're fresh on each set for building strength. 
And then with recovery, you want to make sure that you stretch a little bit afterwards. You do some kind of restoration practice. I have a jacuzzi in my backyard. Yes, I know. I'm very fortunate to have that. Yes, yes. I worked very hard to achieve that too. But I also make sure I actually fucking use that thing. So after every workout, not immediately after, but later on that evening, I'll sit in there for 30 minutes, just relax, unwind. I'll do some of these finger exercises. Hey, this is one of my additional things to improve my grip strength. See that? I just walk around all day doing this. <laughs> Next time I fly somewhere and I'm in TSA, I'm in the TSA line, I'm just going to do this the whole time and see if I get pulled aside. All right. Now, what the fuck was I talking about? Okay. Now, back to high-frequency training. Oh, psh, back to restoration. I think I need some brain restoration. Optimal sleep is crucial. Obviously, everyone always says get eight hours of deep sleep every night. For a lot of people, that's not possible. You have way too much going on. And for many people, it's not even necessary, meaning that if you're really good at falling asleep and staying in a deep sleep state, you could probably get away with five, six hours because it's the quality of sleep that matters. Now, ideally, you have quality and quantity. Eight hours of deep sleep is way better than five hours of deep sleep, but five hours of deep sleep is way better than eight hours where you're tossing and turning and you're constantly getting up. Because I tell you, especially as you get older, lack of sleep is going to have an extremely detrimental effect on your hormonal profile. And if you don't have an optimal hormonal profile, you're not going to get the most out of your training. Don't have the illusion that training can be a primary tool to improve your hormonal protocol. Absolutely, it's supportive, but it's more the opposite, meaning that you need an optimal hormone profile going into your workouts to get the most benefit out of it. That's why I'm so fixated on hormone optimization because it has such a tremendous benefit to physical training, your mental health. I mean, if you deal with mental health issues and you optimize your hormones, I'm not saying you're gonna eradicate all those issues, although in some cases you will, but you're definitely gonna feel way better and have greater tools to handle whatever adversity, whatever difficulty you deal with. Now with intensity also, most of the time I like to do what I call deposit training. Like I said, I'm leaving several reps in the bank. But if every once in a while you have to go through an intensification phase. So I may do eight weeks of deposit training. I'm leaving every training session fresh. My technique is getting better. I feel good, I feel ready to go. And then I'll ramp it up for about three to four weeks. This is where I increase the intensity. I'm not going to failure or close to it, but now it may be I'm leaving one rep in the bank as opposed to three. So now I'm cranking up the intensity. And this is when you're getting close to pursuing a PR. So let's say I want to deadlift 625 pounds before the end of the year. Right now, I'm not in an intensification phase. I'm still in a deposit training phase. But let's say December, first week of December, I'm going to start ramping it up and make sure I hit this goal before the end of the year. So at this, and you can only stay in that intensification phase for about three to four weeks. Now the illusion you have when you're in it, because deposit training is so effective, it's the deposit training phase where you build the most strength. Intensification phase, you're still building strength, but you're also demonstrating it. You're building your confidence. Now when you're in the intensification phase, if you did deposit training correctly, you are going to feel super strong. It's going to be very difficult to leave a rep in the bank because you just feel that you can do a lot more. But you have to have the discipline to purposely do a little bit less because you want to sustain that effort for several weeks, that performance ability for several weeks. And then hit your PR and then boom, take a week off or dial it back for a week and then get back into deposit training. But when you're in that intensification phase, you start believing that, hey, I could just stay in this phase indefinitely. You know, every week I'm getting stronger. I go, yeah, every week you are getting stronger because you did the deposit training. Now you're demonstrating the increase in strength and you're getting yourself mentally prepared for heavier lifting efforts. But if you stay in that phase for too long, it's going to have diminishing returns. So I always find about three to four weeks in. When you've been training as long as I have, I'm 47. I've been lifting weights since I was 18. You, you're very intuitive. You know, I know when I need a day off. It's not like a regular person who's slacking. The average person, when they don't feel like training, that doesn't mean that they shouldn't. They should probably means that they should. But in my case, when my body feels really burned out and things feel heavy, more training is not going to help. You take a week off, you relax, you get a massage, you do restoration, make restoration a priority, and then you come back fresh, ready to go. You're going to get the most out of it. 
Now, high frequency training doesn't always have to be a full body workout. Some people train six times a week, but it's just different muscle groups each time. So you're not gonna get the benefit in terms of the frequency for improving strength, but for more hypertrophy goals, that can, be, that can be definitely more beneficial. The way I train is for performance. I don't train to have big muscles or big shoulders. The physique I have is a side effect of the training I do for increasing performance and strength. But in terms of physique composition or hypertrophy, those have never really been goals that excite me. I like being able to perform at a high level. That's what gets me amped up and ready to go. All right, so that in a nutshell is high frequency training, deposit training, and what else was I talking about? And the five pillars, there we go.